Triple Open Science uh, uh, Training Series, which is organized by the Triple Project as an activity of Work Package 6, which is focused on open science and the EOSC integration. Um, in the slide, let me, yeah, in the slide you see also the next two scheduled events which are planned in for May and uh, for June. Uh, the first one on May 26 is uh, about EOSC onboarding. Our presenter will be Joshua Okansei uh, from CESDA. And the second one, which is scheduled uh, for the end of June, the 29, uh, is held by Suzanne de Mouchel, uh, which is a triple coordinator. And uh, it is about the EOSC, its state of the art and perspectives. Uh, you will find more information about these two events uh, on our website and the registrations will be opened soon. So please stay tuned. Uh, today's webinar is uh, dedicated to ORI platform, Open Research Europe. Uh, and um, we ask you to, to write, to, to put your questions on Mentimeter. You read the code uh, in the slide. We will copy it on the, the code on the chat as well. So please feel free during, also during the presentation to put your slides and then we will collect the slides and uh, address them to our uh, presenters. And uh, I'm very uh, glad to, to welcome our uh, trainers of today, Emma Lazzeri and uh, Ilaria Fava. Let me very briefly introduce both of them, although they are very well known uh, within the community. Uh, Emma is open science researcher at GAR and at ISTI CNR, uh, and she is involved in many, in several EOSC related projects as Open Air, EOSC Secretariat, and EOSC Pillar. She is member of the Open Science Monitor Expert Group of the European Commission and of the community of practice for training coordinators in open science. And she coordinates the task force of the ICDI Competence Center on EOSC. Mm, Ilaria has been working for years on projects in the field of open science. She works at the Göttingen State and University Library, and she recently collaborated with RDA Europe to the promotion of good practices for research data sharing. In open air, Ilaria is responsible for the communication and dissemination activities, and she is the liaison with F1000 team under the Memorandum of Understanding that was signed to collectively promote and enhance the ORI uh, publishing platform. I think it's uh, enough, uh, and uh, I I give the floor to to Emma, and stop my sharing so you can start with yours. Thank you, Francesca. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this webinar. Uh, let me uh, share my screen uh, and start the presentation today. I will start, and then Ilaria will follow. Um, with more technical details about how Open Research Europe works. But before that, um, I would like to introduce a little bit uh, what is uh, the strategy that the European Commission puts into place uh, within Horizon Europe. And uh, I have to say that I just uh, attended a very interesting webinar, uh, which is linked here in the slides, uh, where Victoria Zucala and uh, Angelica Marino highlighted the, uh, the news about the strategy for Horizon Europe for assessing um, uh, research uh, in the open science era. So what I'm going to do today is using some of their slides uh, to, uh, to present the European Commission 
Commission uh, outline in Horizon Europe. So first of all, uh, you probably know that the strategy uh, for open science for the EC started a long time ago with the FP7. Uh, and uh, now we are entering uh, the first phase of Horizon Europe, where uh, there will be a, a mandatory open access um, uh, obligation to deposit publications uh, in, in open access without any embargo period, data management plan and uh, fair research data management will be the uh, new normal. So there is no pilot anymore. And uh, from now on, open science will be fully embedded into the research work. So from this slide, you can see that the diffusion and the knowledge of open science is included in the scientific impact for projects that are uh, funded under Horizon Europe. And this is quite important because um, the scientific impact is also uh, addressed uh, at the level of the project proposal. So um, from now on, open science practices will be evaluated at the proposal stage. So there are a number of uh, important documents uh, where uh, open science is not only cited, but embedded into the uh, structure and uh, the approach of, of the documentation. So some of these are already out and you can uh, check. Uh, open science is a new approach that the European Commission wants to support. Uh, and uh, one of the key message is that science must be uh, a cooperative work. And this is what uh, the, the EC is trying to, um, uh, to, to strengthen in Horizon Europe. Um, so what happens is that from now on, open science practices uh, will be um, uh, both mandatory uh, and also uh, not mandatory, but highly recommended. So for example, the early and open sharing of research uh, will be recommended, for example, through uh, reports or preprints, uh, crowdsourcing, and so on. Uh, the research output management uh, included the research data management that will be mandatory for data and also recommended for other outputs. Um, there will be some measures to to, uh, ensure that reproducibility uh, uh, will be uh, stressed and key uh, for research output. We all know that there is a big problem uh, today with the reproducibility of science. So everything that the EC is doing is also um, has also the aim to enhance uh, the reproducibility of the research results. Uh, we know that uh, providing open access to research outputs uh, will be um, uh, both mandatory for publication and highly uh, recommended for other outputs. Um, there, is, uh, there will be um, a definition of what the European Commission means by trusted repository that will be included in the um, annotated grant agreement. So um, there is an effort to, uh, to define what a trusted repository is. Um, some of the practices of open science, such as the participation in open peer review uh, and involving uh, all the relevant uh, uh, knowledge actors, including, for example, citizen, will be recommended practices uh, that will not be evaluated but will count as an extra, uh, um, how to say, evaluation point uh, when, when, uh, uh, when discussing the proposal and also the results of the project. So as said, there is a number of criteria that uh, uh, will be taken into account when evaluating proposals uh, in Horizon Europe when it matters open science. So there are some excellence criterion that are included in the methodology and we will see in a moment where. Uh, so open science practices will have to be described and the evaluation of quality of open science pr practices will be, uh, will be taken into account in the methodology. Then there is also a kind uh, a quality of implementation criteria. So um, you will 
be asked to describe your expertise in open science practices, you will have to, um, to prove uh, that your work is, uh, is carried out within the open uh, science, um, with an open science methodology. So um, your uh, CV will be evaluated also on the base of what you have done so far uh, for open science. Um, so um, there are some, uh, um, some uh, practices that will be mandatory and some one that will be non-mandatory, but uh, only uh, they will be only used where appropriate. Uh, of course, there are exceptions. Uh, and uh, one of these is that the ERC will not evaluate open science for the moment. So uh, what I'm uh, telling you now only applies for uh, Horizon Europe project and not for the ERC. So in the model grant agreement, we already find some requirements for open science, in particular for scientific publications and research data management. So for what concerns the scientific publication, we all know that the European Commission is one of the, uh, the, the funders that support Plan S, and Plan S was then embedded into the uh, grant agreement so that uh, the principles of Plan S are, are reflected into the mandate. So so there is no more uh, any embargo period uh, for um, the deposition and the, the immediate the, the open access uh, for um, uh, peer review scientific publication. And uh, there is still uh, the obligation to deposit in a, uh, in a repository uh, under a CC BY or equivalent license. This is quite important because um, the, the Plan S requires uh, CC BY as uh, the license to be applied to, um, to uh, open access uh, publication. It is also important that the Commission will stress, and we will see in a moment how with Elaria how how this is uh, included into the ORI um, into the ORI uh, platform. Uh, the Commission is stressing so much that every uh, research output or tools or instrument that are needed to validate the conclusions of the scientific publication will be asked to be provided. Uh, so uh, this we will see uh, Ori um, is, is carrying out by embedding this into the support uh, for, for authors. So, um, and this is very important for the commission because of the reproducibility of research and research integrity. Of course, uh, we have uh, um, an, an open access also to the metadata uh, that uh, are uh, used to um, describe the publication, which is fully in line with the FAIR principles. Um, again, as said, the, the description of what the Commission intends as a trusted repository is not out for the moment. We will have it in the annotated grant agreement. Uh, and um, uh, so we do not have details about this now, but we know that uh, there will be a definition in, in uh, the annotated grant agreement. So, uh, open access to scientific publication, another must that uh, derives from Plan S is that the authors, uh, beneficiaries of, of Horizon Europe must retain sufficient intellectual property rights to comply with the open access requirements. And uh, this also means that um, beneficiaries uh, can choose uh, the, the favorite venue to publish their research, but indeed uh, publication fees will be reimbursable only if the publishing venue is full open access. This means that no publication fees will be reimbursed for hybrid journals. Uh, for what concerns the research data management, uh, now the norm will be uh, fair by design, so uh, the, the digital research data that are generated uh, within a European project must be managed in line with the FAIR principle. Uh, this means that a data management plan will be mandatory for every project 
there will be no opt out of the project uh, anymore because there is no more pilot about the data management. So every single project will have uh, to deliver and, and regularly update a data management plan and also to ensure open access of data under CC BY or CC0. Uh, or equivalent um, uh, license, uh, following also uh, the principle that uh, we we started to learn in in Horizon uh, 2020, as open as possible, as closed as necessary. This means that there is no obligation to open the data, but there is uh, uh, um, the, the the what the Commission wants is that data are managed. Uh, in line with the FAIR principle, and then they're open as possible and closed as necessary. Of course, uh, whenever there is the need to keep the, um, the data uh, with a restricted or closed access, um, you will be asked to provide information via the repository uh, of um, also of, of the metadata that describe the data uh, and also uh, um, of any, uh, as I said, any research outputs that are needed uh, to reuse and validate the data. Uh, so uh, there are some additional open science practices that will be uh, also included in specific calls. Um, these uh, may be, for example, calls in case of public uh, uh, emergency as the one that we are now living with the uh, COVID-19. Uh, and uh, uh, in case there are some additional obligation on open science practices, this will be mandatory for the calls. Okay, so um, what, uh, again, what the commission is tending to do is, is to have some obligation and some recommendation for, for open access. So this is uh, the Horizon Europe uh, template that has been uh, um, issued by the EC. Uh, what we can learn by looking at the template is that the curriculum of uh, beneficiaries will be evaluated not only for publication, which are all expected to be open access. So uh, in, in case you are listing publication, these must be. Uh, available in open access, but also uh, you can list uh, some widely used data set that again are expected to be fair and as open as possible and as close as necessary, but also software, goods, services, or any other achievements that are relevant to the core content. So we are moving away from considering only publications and in particular the venue of publication as a an, an, um, measure for quality and no impact factor will be used anymore uh, but uh, different types of outputs as said and 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 their um, relevance for the open science practices will be evaluated in the proposal part b and in particular into the methodology you will be asked to describe how appropriate open science practices are implemented as an integral part of the methodology. And also you will be asked to give a first uh, and uh, an, a summary of the strategy that you intend to apply for fair research data management. So from now on, open science will be the new normal. No pilot anymore. We're not discussing anymore if this is the case to apply open science to research, but research must be open. So having said that and having uh, given you the, the, uh, an overview of what is the strategy for open science for the European Commission and the uh, New Horizon Europe uh, framework program, uh, let's uh, go and check what Open Research Europe vision is and why and who and what uh, is doing um, is, is uh, doing to to um, to build this new platform. So Open Research Europe was funded thanks to a public procurement of five uh, 0.8 million euro. Uh, the contract was signed one year ago uh, with F1000 Research and will last for four years. Uh, I'm telling you this because 
transparency is one of the key elements of the strategy uh, for open research Europe that the European Commission wants uh, to uh, carry out. So every single money spent is uh, transparently uh, addressed in, uh, in uh, Open Research Europe website. Uh, there, is, uh, uh, there are a number of collaboration that F1000 uh, uh, has signed uh, uh, a collaboration agreements or a memorandum of understanding has signed with other uh, initiatives and uh, uh, institutions that are working uh, to, um, uh, to make the platform uh, better. So there is a collaboration with the, um, for example, with Liber and Eurodoc and with Open Air uh, to um, uh, communicate also about uh, ORI. Um, what is important to, to stress at this moment is that ORI is something not new, but it is different from a journal. So. ORI will, be, ORI will be a publishing platform. Uh, the aim is different from uh, the journal uh, publishing policy. So the aim of the ORI will be to give researchers a venue where to publish the results of their research, which is funded by the European Commission, irrespective of the perceived level of interest of novelty. So both uh, positive, confirmatory, or negative results, as well as null studies, are suitable for publication. And this is something really important because the scope of the peer review uh, process will not be to re reject or accept a result, but to improve it uh, and to improve its publication thanks to a collaboration, uh, a collaborating effort among experts. So the role of the reviewer uh, is not to uh, reject or accept a paper, but to assess whether the result, the research is technically sound and of academic merit. Of course, there will be check for quality. There will be check, for example, to understand if the research has been published somewhere else. But if uh, the research is a result is presented in a um, uh, scientific way, technically sound and of merit in, in an academic sense, it will be published. So the scope of this, uh, uh, of this platform is to uh, have a venue for high quality, reliable and efficient um, um, results that are obtained within uh, the Horizon research. Um, one thing that I want to stress here is that ORI will be um, uh, can be used both for Horizon Europe beneficiary, but also for project under the Horizon 2020 uh, framework program. Um, and also if the project already ended. So this is a way that the beneficiary have uh, to publish their research with no extra cost. Um, so all the processes will be transparent. If you go to uh, the website of ORE, uh, ORE you will find uh, uh, um, a very uh, well-written policies uh, for, uh, and, and guidelines for authors. Uh, there is an expert scientific advisory board that Ilario will tell uh, more about in a moment. Uh, there will be no costs. Uh, to authors or beneficiaries. So no, it's, it's not an APC-based platform. So uh, uh, whoever published publishes in ORI will not have to pay for it. Uh, but indeed, the European Commission will uh, support the cost for the APC by uh, paying directly uh, to the platform. Uh, so uh, as I said, it is a venue where grantees can publish also post-grant uh, results. So even if your project already ended, you will be um, uh, eligible for publication in ORI. Uh, so 
the European Commission is setting up this platform also to be an example uh, for other uh, funders, uh, especially in Europe. We know that uh, such platforms already exist. They are also used and sustained by other funders around the world. For example, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, has a similar platform. Uh, Transparency and cost effectiveness is a must. So we already know that uh, the Commission will pay the, uh, will pay 780 euros per article, and the cost we will see in a moment are all transparent. Um, and one of the other ambition is to try to explore a sustainable open access publishing business model. Uh, that could be of example in uh, uh, to other European uh, funders. So this is the price tra transparency that I was uh, telling you about. Uh, the cost uh, is uh, divided into um, some. Uh, um, you you can see from this graph how the 780 euro that uh, are paid for each article are spent uh, for uh, all the activities that are behind the publication process. Uh, so not only directly connected to the use of the platform, but for example, for community development, um, for services after the publication, and so on. The support of uh, users is also a must of this platform. So you as an author will be fully supported to um, also, for example, to um, comply with the FAIR principle uh, for what concerns data and other outputs that are linked to your article. So um, as I said, original peer-reviewed article first uh, are will be posted uh, that are first posted in the platform will be published as preprints. So this is uh, also in line with the, the recommendation that the Commission is given to uh, provide early access to research results. Um, so the content that is published on the platform will be fully uh, licensed for reuse. So uh, a CC BY license will be applied to, um, to the article. Um, the platform will, have, will be based on uh, an open peer review process. Uh, and uh, uh, so reviewer identities, uh, comments, and post-publication comments will be published on the platform. So this is quite important, not only uh, the assigned reviewers uh, can comment uh, the article, but also the users that can log in to the platform will be able to post uh, comment on the publication. Uh, the platform will be connected to the scholarly ecosystem. This is important again because uh, each article will have a PID assigned. They will be not immediately, but in the future, and OpenAir is working on that, there will be a connection to the repositories so, so that uh, the single deposit will be uh, enabled. So uh, once the article is published, uh, the final version of the paper will be sent to the repositories. Um, and uh, uh, so the, the, the author will not have, again, to uh, deposit the final version in, for example, his or her uh, institutional repository. Open data and software will be supported, interoperable technology, preservation of content, text and data mining, so everything that is needed today to apply open science practices. One uh, other important thing is that uh, the platform will provide article level new generation metrics. So each article will have a section for with a dedicated metrics page, and we will see in a moment uh, how it will look like. Um, so all um, all the policies and and processes are published on the site of the platform for everyone to see. Uh, it is of course uh, fully aligned with the EC policies and principles that we have seen uh, previously in this uh, presentation. And uh, as said, it follows the example uh, of other uh, funders. So. From now on, I give the floor uh, to Ilaria to tell us how ORE will work and works already. 
Okay, thanks. Uh, can uh, I will share my screen, Emma, so yes. you, you can uh, unshare your presentation. And uh, just a quick note before we move to uh, this next part, um, I just want to mention that um, the APC uh, that's uh, 780 euro, um, it's not going to be repaid, but it's of course set in the procurement and uh, it's included in the 5.8 million euro that the commission is paying F1000 research for um, setting up and maintaining the platform and running the platform. Um, and of course, uh, just preventing one of your questions that could be that those 5.8 millions are not enough to pay for all the publications arising from um, Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe. And of course, that's not the case, but um, uh, Open Research Europe aims at being um, the testbed for the publishing, for a new publishing model for the Commission. So uh, in case there is uh, more requests than what uh, ORE can offer in terms of um, the, the availability of the, the budget availability, the Commission will take care of that. Okay, so let's restart the presentation. Um, Emma already told you uh, in details about um, what is ORE, and I would like to point out what are the benefits. So there are different perceived benefits for uh, the research. First, the research as the way of performing research and the society as, an, as the end user of uh, the results of ORE. Um, for the researchers, uh, I would say that um, in addition to the transparency, that's one of the key elements of Open Research Europe, um, the fact that publication is uh, costless for them uh, is definitely a plus so that uh, there is no need for um, planning, uh, planning the budget for the, the research proposal, taking into account uh, publishing venues that are uh, that don't charge, article processing charges uh, could be a relief. Um, and also um, the fact that um, Open Research Europe runs uh, in a way that uh, the author is led through the publication process with the constant support of, the, of an editorial team uh, is for sure helping um, the author himself or herself uh, having um, a nicer publishing experience. Um, of course, there are benefits for the research because the uh, entire process is transparent again, but it's also um, quick, but not in the sense that um, you might think um, combining open access and quick publication that leads to uh, questionable publishing practices. No, um, the fact is that uh, not being a journal, but being a publishing platform, um, but using some of the uh, quality criteria from journals, but not the entire uh, structure of a journal, uh, the um, uh, publication is much more agile. Um, and also uh, the most important thing is that the focus uh, is on the content and not on the container. So what really matters is the article that's published, not uh, the place where the article is published, if you know what I mean. Um, and then of course there are benefits for the society because in the end, uh, the research is published much more quicker and that's and therefore it's, it's available at a quicker pace with respect to a traditional journal. Um, with all that's concerned. So uh, accelerating innovation, um, knowledge sharing, and so on. Okay, so this is uh, the Open Research Europe publishing model that consists of five different steps. Um, the first one is, of course, <laughs> as you can imagine, the article submission. So as Emma mentioned, um, articles must be unpublished so uh, the research needs to be original. Uh, and um, once you submit an, an article to Open Research Europe, there are several pre-publication checks that are performed by uh, Open Research Europe editorial team. Uh, first of all, 
um, there's a check that at least one of the authors listed in uh, as, as the authors of the paper are eligible. So that they are uh, beneficiaries of um, an Horizon 2020 or an, an Horizon Europe project. Um, then there's the need to check if the article meets the scope. Uh, so you will see that there are several um, discipline, disciplinary areas in, in ORRE. So uh, the article has to fit in one or more. But if, it's, if the scope is beyond that, maybe uh, ORE is not uh, the, the best place where to publish it. And of course, there's uh, an automatic check for pl uh, plagiarism, uh, just to ensure that the uh, publication is again um, novel and uh, not published anywhere before. Um, therefore, there are checks on uh, the content in terms of uh, the compliancy with uh, what's stated by ORE as um, editorial and ethical guidelines. Um, and uh, if data are mentioned in the paper, those data also needs to be available. Um, of course, uh, responding to uh, the FAIR principles and to the uh, old but gold uh, late motive of the commission that open that's open as possible as open as possible as closed as necessary, and in case um, authors have some difficulties in uh, making their data available, the editorial team of um, Open Research Europe is at their disposal to support them in making all the underlying uh, data and eventually software available. Um, so then uh, the last check, the last step before uh, the publication is uh, the production phase. So uh, the article is converted into many formats uh, so that they are both readable by human and by machines. Um, but before that, um, if the text need proof editing, uh, that's done uh, by ORE directly. And there's also a um, quality, uh, quality check on the consistency of citations, references uh, with the uh, format um, highlighted in the um, editorial guidelines. Um, and of course, each of the articles is assigned with a persistent identifier that needs to resolve correctly to enable a proper sharing and citation. Then, it comes the publication and data deposition step, meaning that, um, as, as I mentioned, data and software needs to be available. Um, and um, of course, uh, respecting all the uh, con confidentiality terms, uh, any privacy or security issues and so on. Um, and um, I didn't mention that, but at the moment of the submission, the author or the authors are requested to um, suggest reviewers, uh, at least five. So, at a me sorry, at maximum five, uh, because the publication needs to have at least two reviewers. So, the idea of having um, authors suggesting their reviewers is uh, a very common practice in scientific publishing. Uh, it's more common in some disciplines uh, rather than in others, but still it's, it's, a, it's an established practice. And um, the, the idea is that the authors uh, know uh, who they would like to be their reviewers, so they can suggest them. But in case uh, the reviewers are not available or the authors um, are not able to suggest more than one, um, the, the system has a mechanism that's based on several algorithms that are able to suggest who's the most suitable reviewer for that um, publication based on the reviewer's research interests. Um, and also, um, in case you are interested in, being, in becoming a reviewer for Open Research Europe, you can definitely apply for that. Uh, in the About section, there's a, 
a paragraph about about specifically how to become a reviewer. Uh, you just need to send uh, to fill in an application form and send your CV, and then the editorial team will assess uh, your um, availability. Well, and and will get in touch. <laughs> but um, yeah, so basically that's this, and then then the um, peer review process uh, undergoes continuously until there are at least two reviewers, as I mentioned, um, expressing their opinion uh, on a paper. Um, and uh, the again, uh, transparency is um, a thing because uh, it's open peer review, meaning that uh, the, the reviewers' names are um, available to the to the authors uh, and the other way around so um, so that the idea is that the authors are able to uh, engage in a discussion with the reviewers um, for uh, for the sake of the um, of the improvement of the research and not for um, being punished <laughs> because they publish something that the reviewer don't like. Um, the last step is that once the article passes the peer review, uh, they are finally published and they can be sent to um, indexers and repositories. Um, on open peer review, uh, I, I mentioned that uh, the um, reviewers' identities are available, so they are open, uh, and uh, they could be um, also identified with ORCID, so uh, there is a persistent identifier for authors as well and for reviewers. Um, and of course, um, being, being an open peer review, um, especially, um, the reviewers must uh, state if there is any conflict of interest uh, in, in reviewing uh, a paper that's uh, suggested to them. Um, if there's such a conflict of interest, of course, uh, this system or the editorial team will find out another reviewer to, to replace the one with a conflict. Um, the review reports are available uh, on the article uh, page, as well as the uh, answers that uh, the, the authors might have to those reports. And uh, all these reports and, the, and also the answers are um, assigned with a DOI and uh, are citable and have viewing metrics. Um, and this is especially made to reward reviewers for the work they are doing. Um, this goes very much in line with uh, some um, initiatives that um, have been um, available recently. Um, to uh, like, for example, pablons or reviewer credits, where um, when acting as a reviewer, you can get recognize recognition for the work uh, that you that you have been doing as a reviewer for a specific journal. Um, in their uh, reports, uh, reviewers can um, assign a status to uh, the article, meaning that uh, the uh, the the article could be approved, uh, approved with reservation, meaning that uh, there are some tweaks uh, to, to make uh, for the paper to be uh, fully scientific, scientifically sound, or, um, but uh, we've, we've been assured it's very rare uh, that um, the paper uh, gets a not approved mark, um, but uh, it's still available on the platform, um, because also negative results, not also not not just in terms of that you make an experiment and the result of the experiment is negative, but also that your result as a as a researcher could be negative, but that doesn't mean that you didn't perform your research. So that that should be available as well. Um, as I mentioned, the last process is uh, the dissemination of the um, published paper. 
so that um so let i will go back to this uh, at a later stage but um just for you to know uh, there is a, a certain threshold uh, that's needed for um, an article to pass peer reviewed peer review and be indexed uh, and disseminated um, so here is year zero cap and then i will show you some examples uh, of how this works in, into the practice um, okay so this is an example from open research europe uh, directly uh, and you see that this is a paper uh, that is awaiting peer review, meaning that uh, the author submitted the paper, all the pre-publication checks um, have been performed, uh, the, the article is available at this DOI and has also a certain number of downloads that I didn't put in the screenshot, but I will share you live later. Um, and. Uh, uh, if you are familiar with um, F1000 research platform, you will see that uh, Open Research Europe has the same structure. So that in the in the article title, there's always the reference to uh, what version you are looking at and what is the status of the peer review. So in, in, in this case, you see that it's version one and that uh, the peer review is still pending. Here we see a more uh, complex paper that's not coming from Open Research Europe because it, it's been launched less than one month ago, but it's coming from uh, Welcome Open Research. That's another platform uh, based on the same uh, technology as Open, Open Research Europe. So uh, for example, here you see uh, the version. Uh, in this case, it's version two and there are, um, two reviewers that approve the paper and two that approve the paper with reservations. Um, you see uh, on the right um, the, the combination of the, of the status of the review. Uh, on the bottom, uh, there are the names of the reviewers um, that are all identified with their ORCID IDs. And that's particularly interesting because um, in addition to um, you as a reviewer being listed here, in case there are PhD students helping uh, you, for example, as a professor in performing a review, they could be included as well. So that co-reviewing is also a recognized practice and uh, rewarded as such um, in, the, in the overview of, the, of a paper that's uh, reviewed in these kind of platforms. Um, Emma also mentioned the, uh, the alternative metrics. And in case you see here uh, in the middle of the screen uh, that there are uh, the, the counts for the views of the abstract and of the paper online and the downloads of the PDF. And here is an example of a reviewer report that has been answered and responded to by an author. And all these pieces of information are um, citable and they have a DOI. But in addition to that, each version has um, a, like records uh, the changes that have been um, made between one version and the other so that the entire improvement of a research paper is tracked and it's available. Um, and all versions are keep on being available so, so you can compare um, yourself if you, if you like um, from where the research started until where the research arrived in terms of improvement based on the reviewers comments. And uh, here's also an, an example uh, from F1000 research platform of the underlying data that are available. Um, so uh, Zenodo is um, used uh, very much as the uh, primary repository where to publish your data in case there are no um, more specific repositories you can use. But for example, on the right, uh, on the right table, you see that uh, there are um, data deposited in Figshare 
So any repositories where you can uh, make your data, your, your underlying data available um, and uh, accessible is suitable for, for being included here. Um, the aim of Open Research Europe is to support research in all possible disciplines. And um, there are editorial guidelines and policies specifically prepared for uh, the social sciences and humanities and the SDM disciplines. Uh, and as well as the guidelines and policies, there are also different uh, article types that are mirroring in a way uh, the most used uh, research outputs um, coming from those disciplines. And of course, uh, no need to mention that, but uh, it's always worth <laughs> stressing um, that uh, the data guidelines and policies uh, that Open Research Europe applies are of course in line with what's requested by the EC so that you are, if publishing on Open Research Europe, you are fully sure that you are complying with what the European Commission expects from you as a beneficiary uh, to do. Um, okay, here it comes. What I was uh, trying to, to say before, but it was in the wrong slide, about uh, the dissemination. So um, since last month, so March the 24th, when Open Research Europe was launched, um, all published uh, full text articles and their metadata are available in Zenodo um, in the Open Research Europe community uh, through the uh, Zenodo API. Uh, and these are available just as published articles. While um, they are available both at pre as preprints and um, published articles on Europe PubMed Central, uh, because there is a there are funder mandates uh, for which you have you are supposed to the publish so to deposit both the preprints and the published version. So, uh, in case of um, Europe PubMed Central, Open Research Europe takes care of depositing both version. And uh, if a preprint then uh, passes the peer review and uh, is suitable for like final publication. Uh, it also takes care of updating that version. Um, Emma mentioned that uh, there's uh, work ongoing with open air uh, that will be performed um, before the end of the of the open research Europe project let's, let's call it like this uh, for uh, repository syndication and so content syndication through repositories. Um, meaning that uh, based on the affiliations of the authors, um, and based on the open air research graph, Open Research Europe will be able to push content from the platform to the repositories, um, enriching the repositories and enriching, of course, the open air research graph. And um, preventing a question that might arise, um, Open Research Europe will, of course, uh, apply for indexing in all subject specific databases, um, for example, uh, the OAJ, that's the Directory of Open Access Journals, even though not being a journal, but being publishing open access contents, and Scopus. Um, this is for the wider dissemination and not for the purpose of, of for getting uh, an impact factor. Um, I'm almost at the end, uh, but I want to mention the uh, advisory board of uh, Open Research Europe that's um, at the moment consisting of 25 members uh, from European institutions and beyond, uh, covering all the um, areas that are um, also covered by Open Research Europe. Um, uh, with a certain diversity, both in gender and in the the level of career that the the members of the advisory board have. Um, and what's the role of the advisory board? Um, as you can imagine, being an advisory board, it has to advise Open Research Europe on the um, potential issues, 
uh, or on the future directions that the, the platform should go on. Um, but also uh, the advisory board has the, the task of um, acting as um, I mean, each of the, each of the members of the advisory board has, have the task to um, act as um, ambassadors of Open Research Europe. So they are uh, best placed to gather uh, ideas or suggestions from uh, their communities. Um, yeah, and this is just one last slide about the timeline of Open Research Europe. So if you uh, if you um, have a look around the platform, you will see that all articles have been published on, well, most of the articles have been published on March uh, 24th, 2021. Uh, but this is because all articles that uh, were submitted between December and March were, uh, and authors knew that, uh, they were supposed to be published on the launch. Uh, date. So um, submissions opened in December um, also to test uh, the um, readiness of the communities um, with respect to uh, Open Research Europe. And um, between December and March, there were almost 70 submissions, which was um, a very good number for something that was totally new um, for the European Commission, in, in the European Commission framework. And uh, the, the number of articles is increasing. So that, that means, this means that uh, the, the research community is ready to use it. And, um, and I mean, it's welcome in the platform the way that the Commission uh, was expecting. Um, here we find all the pointers, um, but um, I just want to unshare the presentation. So stop sharing the presentation, uh, just a second, and show you uh, some of the articles that are available on Open Research Europe. So, okay, so you see, for example, um, Coming back to the home page. Sorry, I'm touching something that I didn't want mean to touch. Okay, so you see that um, the, the website is organized into subject areas and you can browse all the articles or by subject area, which is, um, I mean, convenient depending on what you would like to, to achieve. Um, these articles are all uh, the articles coming from the different subject areas and you see that they have already uh, a certain number of views and a certain number of downloads. Um, and uh, I mean, this is a live website, you can check yourself if you like. Um, and you see here that, for example, uh, this is uh, the status, the review status of this article and that uh, the review report is available here. So you can read, you can read it. And in case um, you have comments, uh, even though you're not the reviewer, you're not the author, you're just interested in giving your opinion on the paper, you can sign into the platform and add your comment. That then the author will be able to um, take into account or to discard or, well, decide himself on what he wants to do. Uh, yeah, and so th this was um, a reviewer status with one approved and one, uh, so sorry, with just one, uh, um, sorry, <laughs> one uh, review report approved with reservation. And here you see that there is a paper that has two reviews approved with reservation, meaning that the article is formally uh, suitable for publishing, but uh, the author will probably submit another version of this article just to ensure that he takes into account, she in this case, uh, takes into account all the comments from the reviewers. Um, yeah, okay, that's it.
Thank you very much, Ilaria and Emma, for your very rich and clear presentations. Uh, we have uh, some questions on Mentimeter, so let me share my screen and uh, read. Okay. Um, Francesca, I see there's one in the chat. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, there was one in the chat, but it's... Uh, it's also on the main team? Yeah. In the okay, great. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I checked and uh, thank you for, for saying this. And uh, we start with the first one, I think, and then you, you decide who uh, want to, wants to reply. So we have the first one would like to know more about data aspect. Is there, going, is there going to be review process of published materials? So I think they are referring to data specifically. Yes, um, I can take this so Ilaria can, <laughs> yeah, yeah, can have a break <laughs> and maybe you can drink some water if uh, you need to. Uh, so uh, regarding this, um, I, I, I would like to stress that um, what is being evaluated into ORI is the research process. So um, having said that, data are going to be reviewed uh, as um, part of the research presented, uh, not uh, the data itself, but the data is something that the reviewers will need to assess um, the procedures used uh, and described in, in the article. So uh, data is not going to be reviewed, uh, but will be part of the revision. Uh, I don't know if Ilaria would like to add anything. Um, no, I think that uh, your, your answer was uh, pretty comprehensive. So I don't have anything to add here. Thank you both. Mm, the following question, uh, any idea if and how uh, early and open sharing like registered reports could be validated in the current impact factor centered bibliometric system? Okay, so um, regarding this, um, as, as I said uh, in the beginning, I was uh, attending this uh, webinar by the European Commission. And in this webinar this morning, they stated that there is a distortion in the current evaluation system that uh, takes into account uh, the venue of publication and not the quality of the content. So what uh, the European Commission wants to do is to assess excellence in research and to abandon the uh, impact factor used as a matrix to evaluate research. So no more impact factor will be um, used to evaluate um, um, the, the proposals or the results of uh, EC funded research. Uh, so uh, th the idea is that everything is going to be evaluated on the quality aspect. Okay, so. Um, if, if I can add something, I, I'm expecting that uh, since the Commission has been working on alternative metrics since a while, it's not um, the first step, but it's, I mean, uh, the conclusion of, of several steps started like five or six years ago uh, already. I'm also expecting that um, national evaluation frameworks will somehow adapt to uh, the tendency that the Commission wants to establish so that um, the, the the European tendency for evaluation would go in the same uh, direction, and there would be no conflicts. I mean, of course, this this is not going to happen like in ten minutes. That would be awesome, but it's not going to be the case. But um, I think that from uh, the Commission is a very strong signal that they are um, considering different ways to assess research and that's 
and I mean, and that are not, and that other ways are possible, not just the impact factor. Thank you, Ilaria. Uh, the next question is: Will transformative journals under Plan S criteria be financed by the European Commission or not? Which is connected, I think, to the previous one. So, it, in the yes. Um, so, uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. Probably uh, the question is if the transformative agreements that are signed mm -hmm. by uh, some, okay, the, the price by uh, some of the publishers with uh, countries or institutions will be financially supported by the EC. I think this is the question. Yeah, I, I guess um, so. Yeah, so um, uh, the thing is, uh, <laughs> Transformative agreement are in the form of read and publish agreements that are based on uh, a subscription uh, uh, that is um, uh, normally paid by the institution. So uh, the institution currently uh, uh, is uh, supporting the, the uh, cost of um, subscriptions to journal. Uh, via uh, different fundings. Uh, so probably uh, they are probably using, for example, the overhead of the projects. Uh, and in this sense, uh, the ECR is financing the, the transformative agreements. Um, but as, as said, they are in the, um, they, they take the, the shape of a, um, of a subscription, then uh, there will be no uh, APC asked the, to the single author uh, to be paid. Um, so it's uh, uh, and I, I, indirectly the commission is supporting this financially. Ilaria. Uh, yeah, no, no, that was yeah. crystal clear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, okay. yeah, the next uh, question. What is the difference between a publishing platform and a journal, and how will articles be accessed, assessed, and evaluated? Okay, so uh, this is key to understand. So um, I think the the uh, the difference is in the scope. So the service provided by Ori is a service to publish the research, whereas commercial journals tend to be uh, a, a service um, that has a kind of, uh, how to say, a, a, a barrier, which is uh, the uh, peer review process. So um, in the publishing platform, you can publish whatever research as long as it is adhering to the scientific uh, um, uh, principle and processes, because every single output counts. And uh, you have done your research, you spent your effort, your time, and you were funded by public money. So the society needs uh, to take advantage of each single output that you achieved. In a journal, um, there is the barrier of the peer review that is intended to um, uh, reject Elect. yeah, or, uh, as, uh, yeah, reject or accept uh, something. So the paradigm is completely different. Yeah, and uh, it goes again to the uh, to the to the issue that it's not. Uh, where you publish that matters, but what you publish that has to be uh, assessed for what is worth. So uh, if your research is not sound and does not adhere to um, <laughs> to the basics of the, the scientific processes, then uh, you should work more on it. And um, in, in any case, um, and probably a publishing platform would treat you nicely than a journal. <laughs> yes, and and also um, the the scope of the open peer review that is uh, uh, carried out in the publishing platform is um, is to um, 
uh, how to say, to uh, deliver uh, a better article. So um, in case that there are some flaws in your, uh, in your method, the methodology, the reviewers are expected to help you in, in finding these flaws and, and uh, deliver a better uh, publication. Next question is, uh, concretely, does it mean that a paper is published on the ORI platform or in one of the platforms referenced by the ORI platform? No, 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 no. So it's the, on ORI. Yes. So it's on ORI. Uh, and uh, then after the publication, uh, but this will happen in, in the future. Uh, it, the, the final version, so the version of record will be also sent to the uh, author's uh, um, repository for, uh, for um, to be uh, uh, stored there and deposited there. Yeah, but I mean, as I mentioned, this is going to happen uh, in the next few mm -hmm. years. So mm -hmm. uh, for sure, everything is going to be available on Ori. Uh, as a start, and then for in in the future, it will be wider. Yeah, widely available. Yeah, because uh, 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 this is also part of the strategy for open science of the European Commission. So, uh, it is uh, already uh, assessed that uh, in order to for open science uh, to be embedded into the um, uh, work of scientists. Uh, we need a distributed and federated uh, infrastructure. So uh, it is not possible to have a single and uh, unique place for the position. It is better to uh, um, have uh, institutional repositories managing the production of uh, their researchers. And then these repositories will be federated um, and connected. And in this sense, uh, institutional repositories are key to achieve open science uh, strategy. And on the other hand, publishing in a single platform uh, uh, will uh, um, then made uh, the authors, uh, uh, for the authors will, would be an extra burden because then they already published something and they need to deposit again in their institutional repository. But in this way, uh, the single deposition will be achieved. Thank you. Uh, next one is more an observation than a question, but I wondered if having open reviewer identities and published reviews would impact the willingness of academics to do a review. Can I take this one? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a common question. Uh, and um, in, in a recent webinar where we had Michael Markey, that's the publishing director of F1000, he mentioned that uh, he has been uh, repeatedly asked this question uh, since 2013 when they started F1000. Um, and his answer would be no. <laughs> My my answer my answer is a bit more uh, elaborated, and it is that in general, um, open peer review is um, a way that enables uh, transparency, but also like better behaviors in in research. Uh, God bless you, Francesca. <laughs> Um, uh, especially because uh, in in traditional peer review, like the the single blind or the double blind, uh, there is um, the tendency. I mean, it doesn't happen always, but it 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 does happen often that uh, being the reviewer blind, so that the the reviewer might know who the author is or the reviewer might recognize who the author is, even though the author is not known because the, the disciplinary area is narrow or because there are not so many people dealing with, with a, a specific subject, that um, the, the fact of not um, showing off <laughs> um, makes the reviewer feeling that um, the reviewer, the reviews can be uh, not very polite or not very comprehensive or just um, aiming at 
rejecting without any um, suggestions on how to improve the, that research paper. Uh, while the, the idea of the open peer review is to uh, make research uh, a nicer place where to work, <laughs> the research environment, let's say, uh, and uh, to, to help. I mean, um, it, the way uh, open peer review works in, in this kind of platforms is that uh, it has um, positive side effects for both the authors and the reviewers because it's a mutual learning process. So uh, the reviewers um, provides their comments that are very uh, thorough and detailed. But then if something is not going the way the author um, is, is wanting or is aiming for, uh, I mean, there's a reply. There can be um, a reply to these reviewers. And that's direct. That's not mediated by, by the journal. So um, that, that should be the way to go to me. Mm -hmm. I can also say that uh, uh, you have seen from my uh, early slide today that uh, participating in an open peer review process will be something that uh, is highly recommended in Horizon Europe and uh, are good practices for open science uh, that uh, will also be included in the evaluation if uh, you have participated. So it's not something mandatory, but it is highly recommended. And uh, in this sense, uh, people will uh, be happy to participate and being an open reviewer because they will be credited for it. Mm -hmm. Next uh, question. Will those who receive a Horizon Europe project be obliged to uh, publish their work on this platform or they can still publish their work in open access top journals? Um, it's, it's not mandatory, of course. Uh, it's, it's an option, um, as well as publishing in other open access journals. Publishing in Open Research Europe is just another option that's offered by the European Commission. Uh, with the with the plus that um, other open access journals might have uh, APCs, so uh, costs for publications, while those costs uh, in Open Research Europe are entirely covered by the Commission. Um, but of course, uh, an author can decide to publish uh, where and where he prefers. Yes, and the following the following question. Is it mandatory that the researchers make their data, their data open? Um, no, it's not. They need to manage them um, following the FAIR principles. And they need to, they are requested to make accessible every output that can be used to validate uh, what they write in uh, the article. Uh, next question, which security measures are in place on ORI? Uh, how do you ensure and protect the intellectual rights of the authors? There are two, so I start with the first mm -hmm. one because the second one is not connected. Um, I imagine that uh, one of those questions referring to uh, how do I ensure that once I publish my research uh, online open access, someone doesn't steal it. Uh, that's a late motive of the open access <laughs> movement. Um, so uh, in the case of Open Research Europe, but that applies also to other um, repositories, um, as soon as an article is accepted for publication, so uh, is suitable and, um, and there are reviewers able to review it, uh, it gets a DOI uh, and it's immediately from the very moment that it's put online on Open Research Europe uh, for to be cited, to be downloaded, to be um, considered a publication. Even though it might not pass peer review, uh, as we see, we saw it's an option, uh, but it 
it, I mean, intellectual, intellectual rights and the authorship are totally respected and, and acknowledged because uh, the, the article is available under a CC, a CC by Y license, meaning that uh, even commercial reuse is possible provided that the author gets credit for um, their work. So um, I, I wouldn't mind much about that. It, it's a safe place where to publish. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, may I add that uh, the protection of intellectual rights for the author is automatically um, uh, is is an automatically an automatic process uh, within the copyright uh, law. So from the first moment you finish your article, uh, you will, your rights will be protected automatically by law as long as you can prove you are the author. Signing the copyright agreement with the publisher does not protect your intellectual rights, but on the contrary, it is a contract where you, as an author, transfer your rights uh, to the publisher. So probably here the question was also um, because we researchers uh, tend to think that the copyright that we sign with the publisher is because uh, we need to protect our intellectual rights, but indeed it is an act where we transfer or uh, we, we, yes, we, we transfer our rights uh, to the publisher. And in this case, being compliant with Plan S, all the rights remain within the authors. So I would say that you are much more protected when publishing in Ori than publishing in other traditional venues um, in this sense. Thank you Great. very much for that. And then we have, uh, uh, is English the only language available for publishing article also on ORI platform? Yes, it is. For now, yeah. We hope only for now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, as, I, as I mentioned in the very beginning, um, this is a test to see how how well uh, Open Research Europe is received by the community. So if uh, the community expresses uh, additional needs uh, and the commission can welcome them, then there is no limit to <laughs> the, the kind of requests that can be made. Thank you. And we have the last uh, uh, series of que questions. Can you please explain the process of peer review selection? Also, who can be a peer reviewer? And could you also explain how the different fields will be distinguished? Um, can I start from the last one? So uh, when, uh, when an author um, submits an article to ORI, uh, he or she has to identify where, uh, in which of the uh, discipline areas to submit that 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 um, that article, so that's um, something that the author decides and that the editorial team validates. So, in case uh, the, um, the the selected field is not exactly matching the scope, uh, there could be additional fields added. Um, then uh, the the peer review the peer reviewer selection. Um, and uh, no, let me let me continue from the bottom. Who can be peer reviewer? Anybody that has knowledge of um, the, the discipline and that has knowledge of the scientific processes. So that that is aware and knows uh, what means uh, performing a, a research strict to sensu. Um, the, the selection process works in a way that uh, the authors can um, indicate um, up to five reviewers. So meaning that uh, they would like five people from their research community that are renowned for being um, expert in that specific field um, to, to be uh, the ones checking the paper. Uh, because the authors know that those people are going to be best placed for 
uh, addressing any uh, kind of comments uh, that the that the paper has. Um, but in case um, the authors are not available, are not sorry, not able to uh, suggest uh, reviewers because they are, for example, uh, early career researchers and new to the field. Um, the based on the uh, the reviewers uh, expertise. So when you when you apply to be a reviewer for Open Research Europe, you have to uh, fill in a form, as I mentioned before, and um, you are asked to answer to a series of questions that are aimed at um, identify your research expertise. So based on that uh, answers, um, you are included into uh, a peer reviewer database uh, that is able to suggest reviewers whenever an author is not able to do that himself. So that's the way it works. Okay. Um, uh, another, we have uh, two other questions, last minute questions. <laughs> uh, is there any standard cat categorization of the topics of the article? Um, so there are several uh, disciplines that are identified in o Open Research Europe that are natural sciences, engineering and technology, medical and health sciences, agricultural and veterinary sciences, social sciences and humanities and the arts. So these are the broader categories. And of course, um, I guess all researchers know where to place themselves. Uh, so these are the, the broader categorization for the articles. And uh, can articles or other kind of research be rejected? So not, not published in the beginning? No. Um, so even though uh, an article might not be approved, it doesn't get rejected. So it, it, still, it still remains available on the platform. Um, and this goes in the in the same direction of the publication of ne negative results. So that is a negative result as well. Uh, so why uh, why hide it? There there is no need for that. Um, just imagine that uh, you are doing the same uh, kind of experiments that um, an, a, a paper that's not approved but that's available on Nori. Uh, describes you. You save. You might save a lot of time checking that article um, because it's available, and you and you happen to know that the same research idea is not leading to the results that you are expecting. So that that should be the <laughs> the leading concept. Okay. Thank you very much. May I ask you as a final? Uh, note: Do you have any statistics about uh, the disciplines applications per discipline? So, for instance, how are SSH represented for now at this stage? Um, I don't have uh, specific numbers, but um, so uh, there are around twenty uh, papers published in the SSH. Um, I can definitely provide you with those figures as soon as I as I get the, the stats from uh, Open Research Europe. Thank you very much. It was only okay. no, no. Yeah, I know. I it was out of curiosity. I could have I could have been prepared for that, but I didn't <laughs> think about it. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you very much. You thank you both. Uh, I think uh, this discussion was really interesting and helped uh, us uh, clarifying a lot of, uh, of uh, questions we had in our minds uh, since uh, ORI has been published. So thank you again. Uh, before concluding, let me see if I can, yes, uh, go out from here. Uh, I would like to, to uh, tell you two words about the next event that we are organizing within Triple at the first Triple Death Camp, the 11th of May, 
uh, about discovery, discovering discovery. So uh, how we envision our ideal ecosystem for exploring research resources. You are all invited to register and uh, stay tuned uh, for our next uh, training, open science training uh, events. And thank you again to our speakers um, from all of us. Thanks for thank having you. us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye. 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 Thank you.